Okay, everyone. So going back to how the shear stress and normal stress varies as we change our plane within the product. There you go. Um, we can actually look at what it looks like. So here I am showing you what the value of the shear stress and the normal stress as a function of it being like a you know, pure normal or pure shear um, would be. Now what you might notice is that the normal stress obviously has a maximum when there is, you know, we haven't angled it at all, or when we've angled it all the way the opposite direction. Our shear stress, however, it has a maximum at 45 degrees. Now, do you remember that pipe and how it failed at 45 degree angle? Well, a lot of materials have different strengths and weaknesses when it comes to either normal or shear stress. Some are very good at resisting shear stress. Some are terrible at resisting shear stress. And it looks like that pipe was not very good at resisting shear stress. So it failed when the shear stress went above a certain, a certain um, value. Now, if we also look at this, we see two things. One, well, the normal stress is a maximum when we haven't done anything to it. And the shear stress is a maximum at 45 degrees or 135 degrees. You can also see that the shear stress maximum is one half of the normal stress maximum. And that is the case always. Over two. Okay, so now we know why that pipe failed. It failed most likely because the shear stress was too great. Um, possibly that was because you know maybe water was got in and froze um, and caused it to crack and break along that line as it was expanding all directions. We don't know, but now you know that you have to worry about shear stress and normal stress at every possible configuration. Okay, one last little detail we're going to talk about is something that you might realize intuitively, but you don't realize, let's just say, mathematically. Now, let's say we have a table here. And do any of you ever have a table where, like, you know, part of it is just spinning around furiously, back and forth, up and down, all around? You're never leaving the table. It just, it, there's that one little edge. It just, it likes to spin completely, you know, furiously. Um, no, you don't have that. If that's happening, the table's broken. So what you know is that for a table to be in equilibrium, every single element of that table has to be in equilibrium, every single one. So if we were to cut it into half quarters, and then cut those into quarters, then keep on cutting it down to smaller and smaller pieces over and over and over again, and eventually we get to the smallest volume moment possible. It's just a, this tiny, infinitely small piece. We know that if the table is in equilibrium, that little piece has to be in equilibrium as well. So what do you think happens with the shear stresses on that piece? Because you know we're going to have some sort of shear stress acting on it, um, and you know how are they related? So it's like this shear stress right here and right here, shear stress in the back. How are they going to be related? Well, what you might realize fairly quickly is if it's going to be in equilibrium, all of those have to be equal. They have to be equal to cancel out. And you would get that from your equilibrium equations. You know, if you do some of the forces in the X or some of the forces in the Y, and then some of the moments, you would eventually figure out like, oh, okay, um, all of these have to be equal because all the sides are equal. And so therefore, when I multiply the stress by the area, I'll get the force and all the forces have to be equal. So this is a, just a little thing right here that's not, doesn't seem very important right now. But as I said over here, it is very important we get to pressure vessels. You actually use this quite a bit. Um, because in pressure vessels, there's all kinds of craziness, and this simplifies our calculations. We'll bring it back. Don't worry. We're not just throwing it out here and expecting to remember that for another 15 chapters. But <laughs> I promise you, we'll get there. Okay, so that's everything for today, I believe. Yes, we're going to an example next time. So I hope this helps you, and I'll see you all next time as we start working out some examples and some group problems. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.